want to talk about this coaching profession for uh, for just a second. And uh, Donzel Floyd on our crew upstairs came up with this. Since the end of the 12 and 13 season, only these seven wow. are still wow. coaching their teams. And um, earlier this season, back in November, get off to a four and seven start. Yeah. Kevin, were you stunned? Yes. That the Rockets let you go? Yeah, I was. I kind of went in and I had said that we had a, we had a rough camp. A lot of guys injured. Uh, Dwight couldn't do back-to-back -back practices and, and was not going to be able to do back-to-back -back games until December. Uh, James had sprained his ankle in the summer hard and came in overweight. And we just weren't playing very well. And I told our guys at the end of uh, training camp, I said, hey, we're a month, six weeks away from our team kind of gelling and playing well. So we got off to a tough start and I came in and I sat down and I said, you're fired. I went, whoo. I, I was like, wow, I, I really, really surprised me. I did not think that was the case. And, you know, I've never had a team that I've been with coaching that I have not been able to get motivated and get going and, and winning. And we just had a really bad – look, we were not playing well. I'll be the first to admit that. But it was so, it was so um, sh short, 11 games getting going. In fairly recent memory, who had been to the Western Conference Finals. Game. Yeah. I thought maybe that that might have bought me a little bit more time, but I, I, I guess not. Uh, we, had, we had won 56 games the year before, got to the Western Conference Finals with that same exact team for the most part. Well, you look at what's going on now, because after you, then it was Lionel Hollins um, and the David Blatt yeah. and Jeff Hornacek and now Derek Fisher out in New York. Um, I mean, what is it like to be a head coach? What, is it, what kind of message is there for other head coaches out there right now? Well, if your name's not Greg Popovich, I tell you what, rent, don't don't buy, <laughs> because uh, it's happening fast, boy. I tell you what, and it's a tough profession. I just think that there are so many players who have so much um, pull right now inside the league, and and um, I just think that the the, the teams that say, okay, look, we're going to go through some rough patches, we're, we may struggle at times, but we're staying the course. We're just going to, you know, we're going to keep going, especially if, you ha if you've had su success. Um, it's just rough right now in the coaching profession. Now you see George Carl. They're talking about him, and yeah, we changed our mind. We're not going to fire him today. Right. So you're like, oh, boy, what does that say about tomorrow? Exactly. You know, it's just unfortunate, and and Obviously, I don't like your general manager. I thought he threw you under the bus. You were in the Western Conference Finals five months ago, and after 11 games, you, I, I thought that was a disgrace and a travesty. But let's talk about the Sacramento situation. So I'm sitting around watching television this weekend, and there's on the crowd, the crowd that the, the, the Kings are thinking about firing George Carl. First of all, this can't be very good for George Carl. You're sitting at home eating your breakfast, <laughs> and they're, like, they're contemplating firing me. But you know what? Bad organizations are always going to be bad organizations. Mark Cuban said it earlier about the Clippers. If you look at pro sports, there's a reason in the last 30 years, uh, most of the team, it's been a very select group of teams that have actually won the NBA championship. They have stability at the top. They have a good owner who stays out. You know, th this guy, just because you have money, that don't mean you know anything about basketball. That just means you're rich. <laughs> you and, say this guy, you're talking about uh, Vivek. Vivek uh, Ronald Divac. Listen, and, and I like Vlada Divac, uh, and I hope he's successful. But these guys have had seven coaches in seven years, basically. Yeah. At some point, you have to blame your players. At some point, it's not the coaches. And I think, and I'm, I'm not saying it just because Kevin's here, I think what's happening in the NBA today, and Kevin just touched on it, we've given these players so much power and we're giving general managers cop-outs. They keep firing coaches, and they get to stay there longer. Instead of saying, we didn't do a good job of drafting players or trading for players, I think you get to throw three or four coaches under the bus, and these owners need to, number one, stay out of it or get general managers and hold them accountable.